I'm Ed Chung. Again, I've gotten in years and I'm a tournament medicine physician. Uh, this brief video, I'm going to talk about maybe questionables, questions about bilateral Meniere's disease. Trust me, I've been thinking about this. I really worry about it right now. I, I primarily have Meniere's disease on one side. However, um, I've had a couple emails and comments and I've been thinking about it myself from the beginning. Will I get it on both sides? So I'm going to try to address this issue from, from what I've read and from what I know. Um, basically, by, 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 bilateral Meniere's disease is very, very difficult to diagnose and treat. Again, the only way to really truly diagnose Meniere's disease is by pathology and doing an autopsy, which you're going to have to be dead for that. So, um, but if you look at all the studies, I mean, I went through like, I don't know, 10, 15 different studies about Meniere's disease and incidents of bilateral Meniere's, and you search it up and you look at a pub line, a med line, basically it's estimated doing all these different studies that maybe between 15 to 20 to 25% of uh, patients with one-sided Meniere's disease will develop um, bilateral Meniere's disease. So it's the, the definite prevalence is there. However, usually majority of times this um, bilateral Meniere's disease uh, occurs later in the disease process, meaning that a person has severe Meniere's disease that fluctuates on and off for months, years, and so on one side, it, it diminishes the hearing, and you have diminished hearing loss and you have loss of one side, and then what happens is they may go into remission of some sort, and then what happens is the opposite side gets affected. Um, if you really think about it, uh, pathological-wise, you're probably going to have Meniere's on both sides because whatever is causing the, the inflammation or flaring on one side probably is going to cause it on the opposite side. One thing I, I, I would have to say is the probability or incidence of bilateral Meniere's disease is probably more associated with either one, a, a genetic component, because uh, if you look at all of the, all of the studies, it's estimated about one in three to one in four patients with Meniere's disease have a first degree relative that has Meniere's disease. So there's a genetic component to it, but they haven't isolated the gene yet. Um, not all Meniere's disease necessarily has to be genetic, but it's estimated maybe one in three, one in four. So that may be a, a cause of bilateral Meniere's disease because the same gene on one ear is gonna be the same gene on the other ear. The other thing that you could think about with Meniere's disease is that um, a patients who have an autoimmune disease or autoimmune cause of the Meniere's disease um, probably is going to have bilateral Meniere's disease because an autoimmune cause is, is, is an, an inflammation of your own system or body producing proteins or an immunological reaction to your own cells. And that is what an autoimmune disease is in general categories. Um, it's been estimated approximately 10% of patients um, with Meniere's disease have an, uh, uh, a possible, probable autoimmune etiology or cause. Um, in, in other words, what they do is they check, like, it's called a SED rate, a CRP. Um, there's other autoimmune type of markers that, that, that are, are checked, that can be checked. And approximately 10% of patients who have Meniere's disease have uh, positive markers. And those markers are usually an indicative sign of some kind of autoimmune disease. So again, bilateral um, Meniere's disease, again, probable 15 to 25% chance. Um, majority of times it's gonna be one side blowing out and then eventually later on the other side blowing out. However, some patients can have a bilateral um, uh, um, Meniere's right off the bat. It's always possible. But those are going to probably be associated either with some kind of genetic component or uh, um, some kind of autoimmune disease, I'm guessing. Um, you know, one thing I, I did quote here, if you look at the, the notes from below, um, there was a, uh, a 1990 study in the annuals of ENT, otolaryngology. Um, they actually did a, re a sort of retrospective a review, re-review of, of a bunch of cases. So they went through like 73 cases. Um, of, of pathology slides. So they looked at patients who died, 73 people who died and submitted their, their pathology and who had documented or supposedly Meniere's disease. 93, 95% of them ended up having um, endolymphatic hydrops, meaning Meniere's disease uh, pathological findings on one side. About 3% showed collapse of that, of that side. 4% uh, showed um, normal 
line of breath, norm, normal, normal findings. And then about 30%, 29, 30% showed bilateral involvement. So pathologically, I'd have to say about 30% of patients who have Meniere's disease on one side are gonna have Meniere's on the other side, um, on a pathological side, a pathological basis. Again, pathology does not necessarily mean symptomology. So just because you have uh, a finding on, on autopsy or on the cells does not mean that you're going to have symptoms um, from that pathology. Yeah, but um, that, that's, that study is probably the best one that I've seen out there that shows that maybe about 30% of patients are going to have bilateral Meniere's uh, pathologically and maybe about 15-25% percent you are going to have it symptom symptomatic-wise. Um, one other thing I do want to mention is that, you know, bilateral, but the thing is that it's been estimated, um, and this is relatively new, that maybe 15 to 20 percent of one side's central input of hearing. So in other words, when I hear on this side, 10 to 20 percent of the hearing on this side actually gets input from the opposite side. Because hearing is not just what comes in the side. Hearing is the process of your brain associating all those nerve signals and integrating it into sound, okay? So it's been estimated maybe 10 to 20 percent of one, one unilateral hearing comes from the opposite side. So, so to tie this or to tie this together, therefore maybe at times when your tinnitus is severe, your deafness is severe, um, your, your tinnitus or your ringing possibly could be on the other side. And I do have to say at times when my tinnitus and my deafness is very severe on one side and I'm very tired or fatigued, I do have ringing on the opposite side. Okay, So to conclude, um, I'm going to answer a question that was emailed to me. Um, and, and the question was, although I have not been able to figure out which ear is causing the issues, I've had hearing loss and tinnitus and strange feelings in both ears. Any suggestions or recommendations? So in response to this, um, um, what I do recommend is that you do get a formal hearing study and a formal consultation or evaluation by an ENT doctor or otolaryngologist because you really want to sort of have a formal diagnosis um, of Meniere's disease because there's other things that can actually cause a bilateral hearing loss and tinnitus and, and funny feelings. Um, I have a friend who actually is a physician who plays in a band and he has got actually mild bilateral tinnitus, a little more on one side than the other for many, many years of playing loud music in a band. Um, you know, that could be another cause of etiology. So I do recommend going to see a formal consultation with an otolaryngologist or ENT specialist and having a formal hearing study. However, um, in the meantime, while you're waiting for the formal hearing study and, and the consultation, um, I, I've mentioned before, download that free, quote, you hear app for the iPhone. I think it may be on Android, I'm not too sure. And it's free and it's a great little app that um, you can actually test your own hearing and um, you just have to have some high quality headphones and you have to be in a very very quiet place um, and then the last thing I want to conclude with uh, with bilateral Meniere's disease is that the severity and hearing uh, so the severity of the hearing loss and the frequency of the tinnitus is usually inversely correlated with the severity and frequency of the tinnitus so what this means is that the more deafness the more hearing loss usually the higher amount of tinnitus at the same time, the frequency of the hearing loss, which is usually low frequency in Meniere's disease, usually is correlated with the sound of the tinnitus, so the quality of the tinnitus, which is usually very high frequency in compensation or balance for the low frequency hearing loss. So I hope that helps um, with the thoughts about bilateral Meniere's disease and, and symptoms. Thanks.